Well met everyone, I am Rich the Lich, and today I am doing a review on Release the Kraken. This is an eight page PDF created by Steve Fiddler. Should you decide to purchase this, you can find this download on DMs Guild for $3.95. Steve reached out to me via email and he sent this to me, so this is a review copy. I did not pay for this, he sent me the download link for this. But what I am reviewing today is exactly what you will get should you decide that this is some content that you'd like to delve into or dive into, I should say. You like that? So what you will get are three download links. You'll get version 1.1, version 1.2, which is the one I'm going to be covering today. They're essentially the same, but I did a little bit of comparison. It looked like Steve went through sort of the editing process and just made some changes and moved some things around from 1.1 to 1.2. So if you decide to get this, all you really need to do is look through version 1.2. The third download link is you're gonna get a printer-friendly version, which is really cool because as we all know, the cost of printers is never in the printer in and of itself. It's always in the ink. And the printer-friendly version just gives you the, the gist of the information all boiled down without any artwork, without any weird colors in the background. It just prints it in black and white to give you that info if you want to just bring it to your table. So as I said, I was given this all for free. He sent it to me. But you will be getting the exact same content for $3.95 found on DM's Guild. If you simply want to reach out and look for more stuff by Steve Fiddler or Vorpal Dice Press, you can follow them on Twitter at Vorpal Dice Press. You can also take a look at and just search Vorpal Dice Press on Drive-Thru RPG. And as I said, you will find the link to this particular document, this PDF that I'm reviewing here in the description. And I will put the links to reaching out to Steve and just kind of seeing more of the stuff that he has out there. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Steve, for sending me this copy to review. I am going to run this through the process of my system of layout design and editing art and content. And at the end of it all, through my thoughts, my comments, my scores, my review, I hope you are a bit better informed as to whether or not this might be something that is a good fit for you and your gaming group. Let's jump into it. Up first is layout, design, and editing. So we have a very nice front cover, the blue, the white. The aesthetic immediately indicates to me and reminds me that I'm looking at something that would fit within sort of the Ghost of Salt Marsh type of content. Very aquatic, coastal, that sort of vibe and feel. So we have a very nice title. There, everything is readable. Everything stands out. We see what it's called. There's a little play on the spelling of it with K-R-A-K-I-N versus while it does mention and reference the sea monster that we all know, the Kraken, with the letter E, whether it's something that's from, I think it was the original Clash of the Titans, right? Release the Kraken! But seeing this spelled differently is kind of reminding us that we're seeing something new. And there's this new race in here that's called the Kraken, okay? You see the little badge that says it's the best silver seller? I believe in order to get these different metallic badges from DM's Guild, you need to sell a certain amount of copies. And I think to receive silver you need to have sold at least 101 or more copies. So very cool in that regard. I'm glad that you got some success with this, Steve. And hopefully this brings you further success in not just this piece, but in any other content you create. Once again, thank you so much for sending it to me. You see the normal DMs Guild, ban uh, DMs Guild banner in the top right corner kind of indicating you know, what this content is released to and for. Now at the bottom, we've got the first little bit of issue. It's not a big deal, but it says here, take the plunge and uncover new options for 5th edition d and I like that it references what edition we're talking about. That's important. So I know immediately, is it going to fit within my current game system and world? Okay, it's d and and it's 5th edition. And then it tells us that we have new options. I like that that's there and that's good. And as I said, I like the 5th edition and the D&D part, but maybe kind of wrangle some things around, move some stuff a little bit. And whether it's smaller fine print or just changing your stroke or the drop shadow on it, to be able to draw some attention to some little box that might give us an idea of what those options are. That way at a glance, very quickly on the front cover, I know, cool, I've got an eight page document. I know what it's called. I know who it's by. I know that it's sold pretty well. It's a really cool piece of artwork, but I also know that I'm looking at fifth edition D&D &D, and the options are you're giving me a new racial feat for those that have any sort of aquatic ability. You're giving me a new race called the Kraken. You're giving me a new Warlock Pact. You're giving me a new Cleric Domain. So maybe something that might might indicate what those options are, but it's not a big issue, okay? So as we scroll through, 
we've got table of contents and everything seems to be up and up, right? If I was to look at that C domain clerk, which is on page five, navigation wise, I hit page five, there he is. So well done that things were indicated as far as what was your first page of creation as I talk about and I've talked about it in other videos. You wanna make sure that that's prim and proper in ensuring that the PDF is reading the front cover accordingly so that navigation is efficient, okay? I talk about that all the time. We've got the Kraken race. It's laid out well. You've got those little dots that help us read across the screen. You've got nice little open bullet points. Again, the aesthetic is really good. It has a little bit of that coffee stain. I always love this sort of grunged coffee stain look to it. Now you've got this kind of bigger bold area down here at the bottom, and then you have the number one, which is giving us the page number. As we scroll through further, you have that kind of same aesthetic. I think maybe remove the bold and make it a little bit smaller because I like that I see this little subheading or this little border design that indicates to me what I'm looking at and where I am on the page, what section I'm in, if you will, but don't make it so obtrusive. I think combining that with this little flourish of these different die types, so you've got the D4, the D6, D8, D20, whatever, it's a little bit design-wise, it has some elements that stand out from just blocks of columns of text. So my eye is drawn to that a little bit with that those die types. So either make that smaller or remove that entirely. It's nice to have a little bit of, of flair and flourish on the borders of any sort of document because you can often add to the aesthetic of the piece overall, or sometimes you can use it as some sort of almost like a sidebar and convey a little bit of information as we are here, right? We wanna know what page we're on and we wanna know, okay, we're at the, the race part of Release the Kraken. Whereas if I move a little further on here, I can see I'm reading about variants. But you don't wanna have the sidebar stuff be obtrusive or take away from the bulk of the content. And because these dice, these sort of very graphic bold elements stand out these geometric shapes sometimes my eye gets drawn there so either remove those entirely or take it out i don't know if that's sort of a a stamp or a mark of vorpal dice press or whatever you're doing but maybe work on some of that logo stuff so that it's not so obtrusive because here you know for example we've got beautiful artwork but then this is sort of overlaid over the top so the overall aesthetic of the page layout is very well done. I like the use of fonts and the readability of the piece. I like these little boxes here. These are also very, very well done. They're gorgeous. These little flourishes of these little sort of sidebar boxes where it'll tell you, you know, as you read through blah, 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 you know the Frostbite cantrip starting at third level, you can cast the Tendrils of the Depth spell sidebar. And here it is right here. So it immediately identifies it. We know it's its own little separate thing. The layout and the, the writing in and of itself and navigating visually through the screen, it's very well done. It's very familiar, right? You've got the same thing that they do in the official Watsi products where you've got ability score increases right here and it's in bold and italicized. And then there's a period and then we have that sort of section that talks about whatever that is, right? So it's really well laid out in that regard. Everything else, columns, I haven't found any spelling errors, wording errors, so definitely version 1.2, whether you made some changes there and just ensured that it was in tip-top shape, you've done a good job with that. It's very, 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 very nice. Overall, the layout design and editing is, is very well done. The bulk of information is easily readable and I can navigate through it quite well. There's just a few little small design flourish changes, so... In that regard, yes, we're only talking about two points, but I will give layout design and editing one out of two possible points. And that's just quite simply because it's not perfect, but it's very, very good. Up next is art. We have a really cool character design. So I like the artwork on the front cover. I'm not feeling too much of the... We have almost a graphic design element where we have these kind of, you know, slanted border that sort of gives a background to this creature. I would have liked to have seen something like this, maybe a little bigger on the entire front cover, and then playing with various strokes and drop shadows and whatnot and colors to be able to overlay the text over the top of this piece of artwork because it kind of just, it's just laid out a little bit. It, it looks like I'm looking at this sort of very organic, natural, underwater, serene, blue, calming aquatic feel and then I have this sort of harsher kind of gradient you know if you will or just this transition on the front cover 
where this looks like it's just sort of missing something versus, you know, the two points here versus the artwork in the front. The artwork itself is really, really good. The other reason why I maybe would have used something like this for the front cover is here you're just adding some different flourishes of artwork that don't really have anything to do with the content that's written on the page. It's just some cool visuals, and I do love the breakup of kind of this grungy coffee stain, if you will, right, feeling. And I can see that right there. And there's various, I can create that from scratch, or there's various Photoshop brushes where I can just kind of stamp those on. So I do like that. It's not taking away from the page. And you'll see that throughout the document, where here we have this kind of cool wave. I like a little more of this abstract, kind of just environmental art for the front cover. And the reason why is it would have enabled or freed up use of this guy right here who is what I'm seeing as the visual point of what this, what the Kraken is, what this new race is. And if I could have taken that and put it right here, lay this out and move some boxes and things around, or perhaps move some of these sections down onto the next page. I always talk about that. In a PDF format, I am not restricted by the cost of printing extra pages in the binding. So I have all of the space I need. I could have moved some things around and taken this piece of artwork and put it right here because I think it would have been essential to have seen when we talk about a new race, the Kraken, yes, of course, I can be reminded of what's there on the front cover, but it would have been nice to have seen right there, here's a picture of what this new race looks like. And that would have been freed up if you had used some different artwork for the front cover. So I think maybe just take this guy, if you were to do a version 1.3 or just in future stuff, kind of think about the placement of your artwork and what's the main image you're trying to convey. And maybe here's another perspective on art that you can kind of think through. And this is for Steve, but it's helping talk through what my perception is or, or my review on the art in and of itself. The art is well done, but think about on any given page, whenever the audience is going to look at a piece of art, what are you trying to say on that page? And what piece, what visual thing might you be able to, as they say, picture's worth a thousand words, what piece might either be able to complement what's being said on the page? What piece of visual content might be able to say everything for you and avoid you having to write words? Or whether or not Art at whatever level and whatever size, I mean, we're talking design aspects here, whether the art even needs to be there at all and in what capacity, because maybe you don't want to take away from the, the written content. And when you think through that, you can kind of lay out your stuff words for word first. I used to do this professionally. People would just send me a bunch of words, a bunch of art and say, I need this laid out in a two page spread. How do we do this? and then compile all of your various pieces of artwork and then figure out where you can interject them. All the other art is very, very well, well laid out because they're not things that are specific to what's on the page. Here we're looking at racial traits and all this other stuff and we have a wave. There's nothing here that's specifically talking about the wave. There's nothing here that's specifically talking about this artwork. But the art here just kind of complements. Where here, as I said, we've got a new race. I wanna see a picture of that new race. So maybe move that artwork to that section. Otherwise, as we go through, we've got some pretty cool pieces of art. It's talking about a new cleric domain. There isn't anything that kind of indicates what that domain is artistically, but that's something that's subjective and hard to quantify in visuals anyway, right? Because everyone's version of their C domain cleric might look different. There isn't one definitive as there is with the Kraken. You're saying here's kind of what the Krakens look like with this piece on the cover. Also, you don't really have any artwork for the Warlock Pact, and that's fine. Yes, you have some indication here, whether it's very Cthulhu-esque or wherever you want to kind of look into it. You know, the under... Un, I think World of Warcraft has a bunch of underwater sea god type of thing. So you got a little bit of the vibe there. So the artwork is very good quality, but maybe just move and get more out of this particular piece by moving it into this section. So for that that I first read through the Kraken race and I don't immediately have a piece of artwork on that page. I'm gonna go ahead and give art two out of three possible points. I think just maybe taking the art that you have, which is really good, it's very well done, so all of the artists involved, outstanding, but just maybe move some things around so that it's placed a little bit better and it's complementing the work a little more. Finally, the meat and potatoes, the nuts and bolts, the peanut butter and jelly, whatever you wanna call it. Let's take a look at the content. So what do we have here? We have eight pages of a PDF, okay? Yes, you have a front cover, so there's information here, but there's no 
other main content on page one. You're also not going to have any other major content. This is sort of how to reach out, as I said, and follow Steve Fiddler and Vorpal Dice Press. So you've got kind of these six pages within. What we have is an entirely new race, okay? And there's going to talk about, of course, the racial features. So what are the things that change on your character sheet should you choose to play this race? We've got a new racial feat called Waterborn. We've got some variants specific maybe to Forgotten Realms, but I think you can twist and turn that a little bit. There is also a new, some, some new, excuse me, deep ocean subclasses. You have a new sea domain for clerics, and then you have a new denizen of the depths, Warlock. Okay, so the Kraken. I'm going to read this to you. I read through this off camera. It sells me on the Kraken race. Steve, if this is entirely you here, and I obviously I, I think it is, but if this is just your mind doing what I do and just kind of spitting out the creative process, this is a beautiful piece of writing. It is, it's as Stephen King, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating here. It's outstanding. Kraken. As our ship rounded the peninsula and entered the bay, I remember noticing the tiny huts made of coral and stone dotting the coast and thinking nothing of it. On reflection, the lack of fishing boats should have been a dead giveaway. We attempted to set anchor, but the anchor was thrown back aboard the ship by a slick, leathery tentacle. Suddenly, the water churned and the ship was locked in place. Dozens of vaguely fish-like creatures rose up from the water and boarded our ship, sending my crew into the depths and forcing them to flee to the shore. At first, I surrendered to my outrage and vowed revenge on these malignant creatures. As I laid in wait and observed them, looking for an opportunity to strike, I was given a glimpse into their life. They were a tribe of people, not creatures. Mothers, fathers, children, and friends. We had encroached upon their land, and they sought only to protect their livelihood. As I reflect on that fateful day, I remember that not one drop of blood was shed by our crew. Boards were broken, and masts were felled, but that was simply wood, nails, and rope. Written by Not Alis, the first mate. That intrigues me when I think of a new race, and I think of, here's a new option. In my game, I am going to come to the table, and I'm going to play something. Your character is your how you manifest all of the things you want to do into that world. It's how you portray your influence on the world. What are you playing? What's your race? What's your class? What do you want to do? What's your personality? The race is arguably the most important single thing you need to make a decision on. And when you have something that's written to that level of, it just, within two paragraphs, it gives so much of a feel of, Okay, these are not just horribly evil. And it does mention that, yes, there's some evil tendencies there, but they're just, they're more people than creatures. And it gives us that good feel. And it makes me intrigued to want to explore further. So very well done that you're providing sort of the background and the role play element of this race before you start getting into the nuts and bolts of, hey, what am I changing on my character sheets? As we look further into it, there's information on the deep heritage and you know where they come from and how you can trace their lineage back to humans and so on and so forth. It gives a really good description which complements that artwork. But again, it would have been cool if this guy was right here with it so I can kind of read and look along simultaneously. Kraken have pale white blue skin and hair that resembles sea plants such as kelp and ranges from blue to greenish yellow. Their faces often have small tentacles that drip from their jawline like slime, so on and so forth. So it gives us a really good written description visually so that I like things like that, that in addition to the artwork, I can look at the artwork and say, this is what my guy looks like. But by reading it, I can kind of start to create that image of what my character is myself. It talks about just some, sort of their background, their history, some personality. It gives some quirks, which is a cool little touch because it gives us that little variability between one Kraken and another. You can simply roll the d6. Maybe you just pick. You carry a flask or container of water from your homeland, homeland with you everywhere you go, which you protect dearly. Whereas another Kraken might say that you assume that everyone treats you as an evil creature, even if your intentions clearly aren't. These are little bits that off of one simple d6 rolled chart might provide some fuel for creativity for background for a way that you go about playing your character it provides you with some interesting names and aquan influences and things like this that share the language you speak 
you've got your normal traits that you would see with all your races, right? Where do I modify my ability scores? We have constitution increases by two and your wisdom increases by one. Talks about how they age. What are some alignment tendencies? Of course, you've got your size and he's kind of medium size, sort of like humans. Then, you, of course, you've got your speed. Your base walking speed is 30 feet. You have swimming speed of 30 feet. You're amphibious, so you can breathe, breathe both air and water. Dark vision, so on and so forth. It has the various things you can do. It adds a new thing called monstrous magic. You know the frostbite cantrip. And also, you have this entire tendrils of the depths. For this one, I'll just let you folks, if you want to, you can simply pause the video and read through that. But it kind of lets you put this little five foot area of water underneath and it can maybe cause some grapple checks you know kind of tendrils come up so it's a new spell entirely that gives you sort of a new vibe and feel of the things you can do right it tells you what languages you can speak so on and so forth so it gives you all of the good bits of here's the different things that you might be able to have i also like little things like this where you treat visibility underwater as if it's clear water and bright light and the range at which you can detect encounters becomes 120 feet. You're just obviously more efficient underwater. Denizen of the depths, because of your adaptation to the most extreme environments underwater, you have resistance to cold damage and you ignore any of the drawbacks caused by deep underwater environments, so on and so forth. There's a new, not just specific to this guy, but you've got a new waterborne racial feat. So all you need as a prerequisite is you need to have some sort of a race that gives you a swim speed. And as such, you get all of these different aquatic adaptations. So that's another new thing you're getting with content. So you're getting the full racial treatment of a new race. As I said, it gives you a really good background and the gist of what this thing is about and whether I want to play it and whether it's going to fit. It gives you all the mechanical aspects of things you can put onto your sheet. And you can always do your own comparison of whether, does this sound like this? Does it like, is it like the UNT? Is it like in half fork in what regard? You know what I mean? That type of thing. Here you have some alternate options where the Kraken race is a new addition to D&D, to the D&D mythos. It's spawned from a natural understanding that not just fiends create packs or cursed bloodlines. In the Forgotten Realms, however, there are two other races that occupy many of the same thematics as the Kraken race. Below, I detail why I didn't use these races, but I, he offers, Steve does, a way in which you might adapt the Kraken as one of these instead. So this is really well done. You're getting a single race called the Kraken, but you may be wondering, well, how does it fit in with like the Lokatha or the Sea Spawn, something that's already out there? And he talks about, I like that he talks about why he did not include those as sort of the standalone race option, but should you want to do this? Here's some mechanical things that you need to make a change with, and you can add that in. So instead of just saying, I didn't want to add it in because of X, Y, Z, he says, I didn't want to add it in, but if you want to, here's some things to do. So it's sort of just a little addition. It's some extra bits of content that's a really, really nice touch. So that's really cool that he did that. When we look into the new cleric domain, the C domain, I'm not going to read through it and digest it all, but there's a lot of really cool bits here. There's a, a very strong vibe of like pushing things away from you, like nothing can engage you, and you use that tidal wave and that force of water to just keep things at bay and whatnot, okay? It's pretty cool. I'm not going to go into that would take an entire video on the balancing aspects of which domain is the best. I think with these type of things, new domains, new subclasses, new races... First and foremost, mo most importantly, the content creator needs to try and satisfy the goal of the document, which is I'm going to create something new. Am I selling you on the theme of that thing? Am I making it, whether you think it's the most powerful or not? And that's so important to consider when you're talking about content of, I want to give some new options for players. I want to give some new options for a DM. Are you creating something that is selling the overall theme that you're going with. That I think is most important because it's each individual player and DM and gaming group and the vibe. Are you playing in a in a setting that's very dark and grim and heavy, you know, heavy combat? Are you playing in something that's very role play based? It's for each individual person to decide whether or not this domain or that warlock pact or this race is a more powerful that's such a subjective thing. But from a role play standpoint, do I feel like I'm creating this aquatic type of thing? I want to play something that's inspired by the sea, by the ocean, by the tidal waves, and by the, by the surge of water and the power that can come from that. Am I getting that? I'm not trying to look at, is this sea domain more powerful than grave domain? Is it more powerful than life domain? So I like that 
I don't have to look through and try and wrangle in the power level of this. Is it just well written and worded well that you're giving me the essence of that? And yes, the C domain is doing that. It is giving me enough that it makes me feel like I'm about water. I'm from the water. I'm inspired by the sea and maybe Umberly and the things that go along with that. And the same happens for the denizen of the depths, the various things that you get from that warlock patron. You know, are you getting... I mean, here, you can take the dash action as a bonus action while swimming. While you're fully immersed in water, you're heavily obscured from any creatures that do not have a swim speed. You gain resistance to cold damage. You become amphibious, able to breathe freely in both air and water. You have a spell that allows you to move a creature 10 feet directly towards you or away from you. You can push yourself in any direction by moving kind of the torrential ebb and flow. You've got tentacles that can come up from... Many variations on how you want to describe it. Do you have hideous fish like a, a hideous a hideous? Do you have a hideous fish like maw erupting from the ground? Is it a swirling pool of water with barbed tentacles that come out and grasp them and, and grapple checks or deal cold damage, whatever it may be? So you have all of these different things. You have the fury of the sea, which is kind of the idea of like call lightning. It fits with that theme. And in that regard, when I was to, if I was to kind of just summarize this content for three dollars ninety five cents, I think there's a decent amount here. If you're kind of playing within that Ghost of Salt Marsh, as said in the very beginning, if you're playing within that vibe, that aquatic, that coastal type of environment and area, you've got a really well thought out race. I that description sold me. I mean, that's point of content just in and of itself because it gives me the idea of. Oh, okay, I'm reading something that feels like it might be able to fit within the world and fit with other normal human creatures, but yet I still have that essence of protecting my environment and I'm from the sea and the water. And it gives you all of the bits you need when it comes to race. Is it perfect? Is it something, you know, I always talk about with content, is it something that every game, every space can use? Is it something that's going to be brought everywhere? Does it inspire me to create more? So maybe in that regard, it's certainly a little as intended, I think, narrow in its focus. You know, it is for those that are kind of running within this sort of game space. But for how it's laid out and for where it is, for content, I'm going to give this four out of five possible points. I was kind of on the edge. I was initially thinking maybe I'll move all the way down to a three. But I think what we have here is... There's a decent amount here that even as a DM, I feel like I might be able to use if I wanted to create something, obviously seafaring and aquatic, you know, more that I can use than just your, you know, your defaults of the various aquatic races that are out there in the monster manual and whatnot. There's enough here that I can play with. And then there's little points of sort of a little more content than I had expected. Yeah, there's a new race, but that new race gives us a new spell. There's a new waterborne feat which can apply to all things. Again, as a prerequisite, as long as you have a swim speed, there there's some things here for you that might fit better. Not only that, yes, you have a new race, but you also have the sea spawn and the Lokatha, which are talking about some things that maybe already exist, but it doesn't just offer that in a sentence that says, here's why I didn't put it, as I said. It says, this is why I didn't put it in, but if you want to, here's the actual things to change. So that's another really, really nice touch. It gives us a new entire sea domain. It gives us a new warlock pact and so on and so forth. So there's a decent amount of content here and it really, while it's narrow in its focus, it really sticks to that theme visually, aesthetically. It's all just there in that aquatic nature and it just gives us more and more within that world. And for $3.95, you're getting this download. You're getting the previous version. You're getting a printer-friendly version. You know, there's a good six, seven pages of just some meat here that I think you can chew on if you're within that world and that setting. So there it is. This is my final score. That's it, folks. Take care.